joining us now to go over that. NBC News correspondent Von Hilliard. Also, NBC News chief political analyst Chuck Todd and Punchable News co-founder and MSNBC political contributor Jake Sherman. Chuck, I know you wrote about this today. I also want to read you a line that I really like from Jonah Goldberg. He said, Trump and his enablers created the vibe petard, and now they're being hoisted on it. <laughs> Look, I mean, this is... He created a cult of personality. It's fine. You know, I'm, I, I, I've been chomping at the bit to either make an apprentice metaphor or not. But, I mean, <laughs> this is the Gary Busey celebrity apprentice season 15, right? Like, he's desperately trying to recreate the 2016 vibes, right? And that's what's really happening with him right now. And this, in fairness to him, he's not the only candidate where when things go wrong, you sort of go back to your political womb. And for him, his political womb is 2016. That was the one he won. So that's why you hear talk of Kellyanne Conway coming on the plane. Maybe she can talk him into um, being slightly more disciplined because she seemed to pull it off for 11 days at the last 11 days of the campaign in 2016. But, you know, the, the part that I think Republic, you know, the Democrats stared at their candidate and realized, oh, wow, he's got an age problem and you can't get younger. Republicans realized they have a problem, but, the, but while Democratic voters were more than happy with throwing Biden aside, Republican voters, they wouldn't tolerate with throwing Trump aside, which is why they're all going about this different way of trying to get him to change. But he isn't going to change. He might change for a day or two, but he isn't going to change. And, you know, it's why when people ask me what's happening with this race, you know, I always say, well, Trump is the one that can lose it. Um, he has some built-in advantages on issues, and he just doesn't know how to take advantage of them. Um, the issues that work for him, Vaughn, are immigration and the economy. Um, this speech that he's giving in North Carolina, is this going to be about immigration or economy? It's being tapped as being about the economy, and the Trump campaign is saying that this is not a campaign rally, even though thousands of people are supposed to be in attendance. Instead, it's going to be a policy address. You and I have both been covering this a long time. We have seen the campaign. They set up these themed events, whether it's on immigration or criminal justice. And, well, yes, he may read a couple lines from the teleprompter focused on those issues, and he may very well do that today, talking about inflation, the cost of housing, the cost of gas prices. We have also then him see him go off script repeatedly and go off like he did in the last week, right, and talking about claiming that the crowd sizes for Kamala Harris are fake, AI generated, right, or go off about her race. And so this is sort of that frustration where the campaign team, now each of these individuals who signed up to work for this campaign, they knew who they were working for. Several of them had been through this before. And so there's only so much you can do to build out the signage and put on the podium economy, right? But ultimately, Donald Trump is running the campaign that he wants and Donald to run. Trump is been somebody who does it his own way. Trump will be Trump. It's what Corey Lewandowski said very early on. Let him let him be himself. Um, he's now eight years older, which is, you know, says something. Can you move a person who's that old to, to be a, a different from who they fundamentally are? Chuck, what I'm, I'm struck with, struck by, though, um, something else that Megyn Kelly said, that he's getting mm -hmm. boring. And he's getting well, boring. I think yeah. she's right when she says that in 2016, it was hard to look away. If you loved him, you didn't want to look away. If you hated him, you couldn't look away. What was happening to this country? Uh, but now it's not it's you can look away. It's easy to 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 not be glued to him any longer. Katie, I was struck at the Republican convention when he spoke. These are remember who's in the hall. These are the diehards. These are the mega hat people. And he kept droning on and on. And you saw his most fervent supporters doing this, looking at their phones, scrolling Instagram or whatever they're scrolling. Chuck, people they left weren't early. They were paying attention. Correct. We've seen this a lot at these rallies because it's the same shtick. You know, he himself, like, sort of made fun of his advisors the other day. They want me to read on the teleprompter. And, you know, Kamala Harris, she's always saying the same speech you know, which is his reluctant way of saying she's always on message. Um, isn't that boring? And yet his off message is the same stuff. He doesn't have new shtick. It is the same shtick. And, and I think part of his frustration is that, you know, he basically had had two um, routines he learned, one against Hillary Clinton and one against Joe Biden. 
And I think at nearly 80 years old, he doesn't want to learn a third routine. He's still talking uh, about Joe Biden Kamala Harris. in interviews. Yeah. He's still going after Joe Biden at rallies. He, he's still trying to practice his uh, derogatory names about Joe Biden, even though Joe Biden's no longer in this race. Listen, people left rallies because he would drone on long in 2016. They still were going to vote for him. The issue now is that if you have a number of people out there who are looking for a change, who want to be enthusiastic, want something different, want a new show, if you will, um, Donald Trump is no longer the new show. Even if he ran rambles on. He's no longer new. Everybody has heard that before, and that's going to be a problem going forward for them. The enthusiasm just won't be there in the same way if it's going to be a race that comes down to enthusiasm. Um, Quinnipiac has some new numbers. These come out of Pennsylvania. It finds that... Um, uh, I was going to say Megyn Kelly. Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, is a slight edge over Donald Trump, 48 to 45. It's in the margin of error. But very interestingly, Jake Sherman, if you look at the next part of this poll, um, Bob Casey is up eight points over Dave McCormick. That's for the Senate seat in Pennsylvania. Down ballot, Donald Trump could be a, a big problem for Republicans if they want to win back the Senate, which felt for a long time to be a pretty easy task for Republicans. I've heard, Katie, in recent days, and I don't subscribe to this, I'm just I'm just suggesting what I hear, uh, that, that Democrats have an outside chance of keeping the Senate. That's what party officials told me yesterday. I don't buy that argument, but there's an undoubtable, uh, undoubtedly uh, noticeable level uh, of confidence and enthusiasm that Democrats were seeking with Joe Biden on the ticket that they, uh, uh, they have found in Kamala Harris. And I just want to add one more thing to what uh, Chuck and Vaughn and you said, it's not only that he can't stick on message, it's that he's talking about patently bizarre things. I mean, the Hannibal Lecter shtick, the AI thing is just is stuff that that undercuts the core ar the, the argument that he's trying to make, that he's a competent, sober leader. A and and I think that's that's troubling to a lot of Republicans. And I had a Republican say to me the other day, he needs to understand he's not running against Hillary Clinton and he has to learn a new shtick because it's just not going to work against Kamala Harris. And, and I think we see that every day. And I think next week, when many of us are in Chicago for the the Democratic convention. I mean, I, I can tell you that I, I've spoken to senior uh, congressional leadership folks over the last couple of days who have said just the enthusiasm they're seeing on the campaign trail, the money they're able to raise is is far beyond what they were able to raise before. So those data points put together um, are, are, are quite interesting. And listen, I think a lot of this in down ballot races, Katie, will come down to the candidate. Dave McCormick has been for now two cycles, an underwhelming candidate. Um, Tim Shee in, in Montana just took his first lead over John Tester in public polling. So there are some signs that Democrats are hanging on, you know, narrowly, but Republicans are pulling ahead. But I, I will say with a non Donald Trump candidate on the ticket, remember, a candidate who has won, but one election and has had a, a pretty abysmal uh, uh, election record since then, they would be doing much better. Jake, what are they saying in the halls of Congress right now? I mean, we, we hear Kevin McCarthy, um, we hear, uh, you know, Vivek Maraswamy going on television, Nikki Haley saying it, he needs to focus on policy, he needs to focus on policy. I, I know that they're in a luxury position to be able to speak their mind because they're not in the day to day of politics and trying to win campaign races with Donald Trump. Um, at the top of the ticket and potentially drawing his ire. But what are you hearing in the halls of Congress from rank and file Republicans about how they feel about their their candidate? There's a there's a split. There's the true Trump MAGA enthusiasts who say this is the guy. He'll do what he wants and he'll win the way he wants to win and he'll win. And then there's more sober minded, realistic people, Katie, who say that he has been given a gift, which is. Uh, uh, an administration who has pre which has presided over an economy, rightly or wrongly, that people feel is going in the wrong direction. The border issue is particularly potent in in key places, and Donald Trump almost refuses to to, to capitalize on that by going off on these bizarre tangents. And and I can tell you that people are people are concerned. People are concerned in the House and the Senate that the message from the top of the ticket is not resonating and it's difficult to separate themselves 
from that message and it drags them down. Can, are you hearing anything about being concerned? Well, and absolutely, because this is a party, if you look at Dave McCormick, right? Donald Trump, I was at a rally in Pennsylvania after he endorsed Mehmet Oz over Dave McCormick in 2022 primary. And he was up on a campaign stage at a fairgrounds in rural, Pen uh, rural Pennsylvania and absolutely slaughtered Dave McCormick as being pro-China, left and right, attack after attack, being, you know, the man of Wall Street, right? And so this is a Republican Party over the last two election cycles that has fallen with Donald Trump. And everybody that is running here in 2024 down ballot, they are running with Donald Trump at their hip. And so for Dave McCormick, is he going to be there on Saturday with Donald Trump? He has appeared at other rallies with him so far. Today, though, Mark Robinson, the controversial lieutenant governor who is running for governor of North Carolina, he is going to be speaking ahead of Donald Trump at this economy address here today, right? And so Donald Trump, this Republican Party is his. And there is, of course, concern not just about the White House, but down ballot in the repercussions even going beyond 2020. Chuck, talk to me about your uh, insights on down ballot. Look, I would just say one thing uh, uh, about Trump himself, though, is he's he's proven that he only knows how to run an outsider insurgent campaign. That was 16. He was the incumbent in 20. And for a while, he was the insurgent, the victim, the legal community, all this stuff. Um, but now he's the incumbent again, right? He's the he's Hillary Clinton in 2016, who is the incumbent without having any of the upsides of incumbency. But to go back to the down ballot and to reinforce Vaughn's point, you know, I think it's Democrats were already finding ways to distance themselves from Biden. So they've already sort of tried to carve out their own identities. Casey has his own identity. Tester has his own identity. Sherrod Brown. The Republicans are all defined by Donald Trump, save for Larry Hogan in Maryland and maybe uh, Noella Domenici in, in New, Me New Mexico, since she's the daughter of a longtime, uh, well uh, popular Republican senator down there. Other than that, I, the, the problem for the down ballot Republicans is in 16, some of them could run away from him because they never supported him. Now they didn't get their nominations without his support, so they can't run away. And if McCormick doesn't go to a rally with Trump in Pennsylvania, you think Trump will mention it to the crowd? <laughs> You're darn right he will.